Hi everyone, I'm Francesca Bessie with the Idaho STEM Action Center. In this video, we're going to explore some tools you can use to better understand your learners and create activities that are responsive to their needs. In our last video, we introduced the three-legged stool as a model for creating student-centered learning activities. Let's take a closer look at the first leg of that stool and its role in the learning design process. Part one, learn. You might hear the phrase learner needs and think of it as what your students need to learn. But that's not exactly what we're talking about here. Knowing what you want your students to learn is a key component of learning design, and we talk about it in detail in our video on objectives. What we mean when we say learner needs, however, are the conditions for successful learning. In other words, what do your students need from you, from each other, and from the learning environment in order to learn successfully? Perhaps one of the best examples for meeting conditions for successful learning is the National School Lunch Program. Research shows that providing students a nutritionally balanced meal at school helps them to stay focused, remember information, and maintain a positive disposition throughout the school day. In general, we know that basic needs like food, water, sanitation, and safety need to be met before meaningful learning can begin. We also know that basic needs, while critically important, are not the only needs that affect a student's readiness to learn. Let's consider a scenario. It's the beginning of the school year and you're finding it challenging to work with your new class of students. But as the year goes on, the dynamic improves. You figure out which communication styles your students respond to best. You're able to anticipate problems before they happen. You know who works well together and who doesn't. By spring, you're able to spend a lot less time on classroom management and a lot more time actually teaching. But just when it feels like things are really running smoothly, the school year ends and you have to start all over with a new group of students. Sound familiar? This dilemma is a powerful testament to how getting to know our learners affects the overall quality of the learning experience. This is why we identify learner needs as one of the three essential components of learning design. And while you might not ever get to know your students overnight, a regular practice of reflecting on your learners' needs and incorporating them in your lesson or activity planning can help you to hone your skills and reach that milestone sooner. But before we begin to identify learner needs, we need to complete a key first step. Challenging our assumptions. Assumptions are things about our learners we take for granted to be true without actual proof. It's normal to make assumptions, and just because something is an assumption doesn't automatically make it false. But it's important to acknowledge when we're making assumptions about our learners so that we can be ready to seek evidence to prove we are correct or to shift our perspective if our assumption is challenged. For example, I might assume that a student who is always asking me to repeat my directions is simply not paying attention when I talk. Rather than just accepting this is true, which will probably leave me to feel resentful of the student, I can investigate further to see if there might be an underlying cause. Does the student perhaps have an undiagnosed hearing difficulty or learning disability affecting listening comprehension? Is the student learning English as a second language? Are there distractions in the learning environment that could be affecting other students as well? Each of these scenarios represents a need I have the capacity to address, therefore improving the learning experience for the student and possibly other students as well. But I wouldn't even know the need was there if I hadn't first challenged my initial assumption. It's difficult to address a need you don't know anything about. This is especially important in informal learning spaces because a lot of the systems that are set up in the school environment to identify latent needs, things like hearing screenings, ESL programs, etc., don't exist in the informal context. In these situations, initiating conversations with caregivers, community partners, and school staff can help to fill in some of the gaps. You'll find a simple exercise on challenging assumptions in the companion material for this video. For now, Let's head over to the planning studio where I'll be introducing a simple tool to help you define your learner needs. Part two, plan. As a practicing educator, you're probably already in the habit of observing your learners and making inferences about how to support them better. An empathy map is a simple but effective tool for organizing what you learn from these observations and analyzing it to identify specific concrete needs. 
If you search the internet for an empathy map, you'll find a variety of different formats suited for different contexts. I'll be using a simple format consisting of four quadrants, say, do, think, and feel. Each quadrant represents a different way of reflecting on your learner's behavior to help you gain insight about what they might need. At the center of your map should be an image, description, or something to represent your learner group. If you recall from 1.1, my group of learners are the kids who attend the weekly drop-in STEM program at my library, which targets kids aged 6 to 12. In the first quadrant, we record things that we hear our learners say. This can include things they say to us, things they say to each other, and things they say to parents or other caregivers. The second quadrant is for things we notice our learners do. For example, moving around a lot while they work, or choosing to sit near a wall, away from other kids. The next two quadrants ask us to go deeper with our observations and consider what our learners might be thinking or feeling. In some cases, a learner might simply tell you what they think or make obvious displays of their feelings, such as pouting or crossing their arms. But most of the time, your learners won't broadcast this information for everyone to see. In fact, they might not even know what they're thinking or feeling themselves. In these cases, we want to look for patterns of learner behavior and reflect on the reasons behind them, including looking back at the more direct observations we've already made. Let's say I have a learner who always asks permission to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water, even though I haven't told her to. I might infer that she associates my program with school and thinks that the rules are the same. Let's consider another scenario where a student who normally never wants to show me what he's working on is suddenly really excited to show me his project. I can probably infer he's feeling especially proud of his work. This is a great start for an empathy map, but your map will likely have many more data points on it by the time you're finished with it. At that point, you'll be able to reflect on the information you gathered and begin to extrapolate needs of your learners. For example, if I consistently observe positive feelings in my learners sharing their work with me or their caregivers, that indicates to me a need for validation from trusted adults. Going through this process should provide insight on how to design your activities generally, as well as how you might adapt your activities for individual learners with more specific needs. To gain further perspective, you might enlist another educator to help you complete the empathy map, or even invite your learners to complete an empathy map about themselves. And remember, needs do change over time. It's a good idea to repeat the empathy map exercise every so often, so you can stay connected with how those needs are changing and respond accordingly. In order to genuinely engage our learners, we must first be able to recognize and respond to their needs. A careful understanding of learner needs provides a strong foundation for successful learning activities. You can see this principle in action in the first video in our series on the three-legged stool for learning design. For even more videos and other great STEM content, hit the button to subscribe or visit resources.stem.idaho.gov. This video was brought to you by the Idaho STEM Action Center. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.